On the 11th of May, 1864, William Gladstone, Chancellor of the Exchequer in Lord Palmerston's Liberal government, made a speech in the House of Commons on parliamentary reform which created something of a stir. Every man who is not presumably incapacitated by some consideration of personal unfitness or of political danger is morally entitled to come within the pale of the Constitution, he declared. Many contemporaries, including the Prime Minister, saw this as an endorsement of universal suffrage, but this was not the case. Gladstone emphasised that he did not want to see sudden or violent or excessive or intoxicating change. And he made it clear that he envisaged giving the vote to only a select portion of the working class. For Gladstone, this was as much a moral as a political question. He argued that the upper portion of the working classes had displayed the qualities required to be given the privilege of the vote. He listed these attributes as self-command, self-control, respect for order, patience under suffering, confidence in the law, and regard for superiors. Mindful of the violent unrest which had preceded the 1832 Reform Act, Gladstone urged his fellow MPs that it was better to approach the question at an early date in a calm frame of mind and without having our doors besieged by crowds or our table loaded with petitions. Lord Palmerston remained unmoved and the backbench bill that had prompted Gladstone's intervention failed. This bill, introduced by Edward Baines, the Liberal MP for Leeds, had proposed to extend the vote in the boroughs to a substantial number of working class men. While Gladstone had not supported Baines's bill, two years later in 1866, he and the new Prime Minister, Lord John Russell, decided to introduce a government measure for reform. This proposed to extend the borough franchise to include a greater number of respectable working class men. Although the bill failed, it acted as a vital catalyst for the Reform Act that was passed by the Conservatives the following year. We should not assume, though, that Gladstone's conversion to reform, as it has sometimes been called, was inevitable. Gladstone began his parliamentary career as the Tory MP for Newark, a pocket borough firmly in the hands of the Duke of Newcastle, and he later served in Sir Robert Peel's Conservative ministries. Gladstone's early views on the question of parliamentary reform were influenced by George Canning, who was Tory MP for Gladstone's native Liverpool and an opponent of change. Canning had argued in 1823 that the lack of uniformity in the existing electoral system was one of its key strengths. Like many of their fellow Tories, Gladstone and Canning feared reform would lead to revolution. In 1831, Gladstone even helped organise a petition against the Whig Ministry's reform bill. By the 1850s, however, Gladstone's views had begun to change as he drifted towards liberalism, becoming keen to settle the question in what he described as a spirit of trust towards the people. By the 1860s, Gladstone, now a prominent figure in the Liberal Party, also became increasingly interested and adept at courting public opinion, becoming affectionately known as the People's William. This was best exemplified in the 1880 election campaign in which Gladstone pioneered modern campaigning tactics. He toured his Midlothian constituency to deliver large-scale public speeches denouncing Disraeli's government that were time to journalist deadlines to maximise newspaper coverage. While the reform bill introduced by Gladstone in 1866 failed, and Disraeli's seizure of the initiative put him on the back foot, other important electoral reforms were subsequently passed by Gladstone's administrations. These included the introduction of the secret ballot in 1872, a wide-ranging measure in 1883 to tackle bribery and corruption at elections, and the Third Reform Act of 1884 to 1885. The latter expanded the franchise in the counties and, as part of a compromise with the Conservatives, redrew Britain's electoral map with an extensive redistribution of seats. Gladstone may have been a late adopter of the cause of parliamentary reform, but he succeeded where many other reformers had failed in bringing more men than ever within the pale of the Constitution.